I don't know how many times I've started Dharma talk by saying, don't listen to the Dharma talk. Focus your attention on the breath. The talk is here to be a fence, to direct you back to the present moment, direct you back to the breath, in case you wander off. The reason I say that is because that's how the Dharma functions as a whole. It's meant to point you back to your mind in the present moment, what you're doing in the present moment. When you can relate things to the present moment, that's when you're using the Dharma in the correct way. When you find that it carries you off into lots of speculation, then you're using it in the wrong way. It's meant to be tools that you bring yourself into the present moment, and not simply just be here in the present moment. You want to understand why you're here, what you're doing, what's the best thing to do in the present moment. So when the Dharma talks about the past or talks about the future, it's meant to catch you if you've wandered off to the past and wandered off into the future and bring you back. And not only bring you back to the present moment, but give you a sense of what you should be doing here. For instance, the teachings on karma. Every time the Buddha talked about cycles of past lives or the general direction of the universe on into the future, he ended up by saying that it all comes down to what people do. Their karma depend that karma is what fashions, has fashioned the past, will fashion the future. Where is karma being made? Well, it's being made right now. What is the karma? It's intention. That's the action that's being performed in the present moment. So you want to look at your intentions. The best way to do that is to meditate. As for the future that we're, we're shaping, well, think about the past that you've shaped in all your past actions. What are the things you've regretted most? And sometimes you might think that you regret something that somebody else did, but the things that really burn inside are the things that you did that were harmful. Why did you do them? Because you weren't very alert. You weren't very mindful. You let defilement take over the mind. How are you going to prevent yourself from doing that in the future? Well, by developing mindfulness, developing alertness. Where do you do that? You do it right here, right now. As for your concern about the future, if you take care of the powers of the mind here in the present moment, that's what's going to enable you to handle the future well when it comes. So the teachings, particularly the teaching on karma, are designed to bring you back into the present moment and to give you an understanding of why you're here. You're not just hanging out in the present moment because it's a wonderful place. You're not here passively. You're actively doing something all the time. So you want to do something skillful. The Buddha talks about right effort, the things you should abandon, the things you should prevent, the things you should give rise to, the things you should maintain and develop. He also talks about the Four Noble Truths, and each of them has a duty. With stress and suffering, your duty is to comprehend it. So if you happen to run into some suffering here in the present moment, try to comprehend it. If you run into any craving, recognize that well, that's the cause for suffering. Do what you can to abandon it, undercut its causes in turn. As for the factors of the path, concentration, mindfulness, alertness, develop those. And if you see any moments where craving disbands. Try to be very clear about how that happens. Whether it's simply one craving taking over another one, or if there's actually a moment when their craving stops and nothing takes its place. Look into that. Make that clear. As for the right efforts or the right exertions I mentioned just now, 
The giving rise is, of course, giving rise to skillful qualities, like the qualities of the path. Not only giving rise to them, but also maintaining them. The preventing and the abandoning, that refers to the cause of suffering. So the Buddha's instructions are very clear. They tell you things to do, but they don't simply say, do this and don't think about why. They give you the reasons. So that when you bring the mind into the present moment, you understand why you're here, what you're doing. And when you understand that much, you understand the Dharma, the purpose of the Dharma. When you use the Dharma for that purpose, you're using it properly. To come into the present moment and to sort out what's going on right here, what the mind is doing. So don't be worried if you don't know a lot about the Dharma or don't understand it all. Understand enough to bring the mind to stillness. Understand enough to bring the mind to the present moment, to watch what it's doing, to be mindful, to be alert right here. If you find yourself wandering off, try to keep it as short a wander as possible. If the mind is persistent, constantly going back to the past, back to the past, or worrying about the future, worrying about the future, keep reminding yourself of the lessons the Dharma has about the past and about the future. The only really useful use for the past is to remember your mistakes and to resolve not to repeat them. Remember what you did well and see if it applies right now. As for the future, the main use of the future is to remind yourself you don't know how much time you have left in the future of this particular lifetime. And it's interesting when the Buddha talks about recollection of death. It's not simply just keeping death, 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 death in mind. The proper reflection is, if I had just one more breath, I could make good use of it. So where does that reflection focus you? It focuses you on the present moment. You do have this one more breath, so make good use of it. Have a sense of the value of each breath as it comes in, each breath as it goes out. Have a sense of the present moment, the opportunities of here in the present moment for performing the duties appropriate to the Four Noble Truths, for mastering right exertion or mastering right effort. It's all you really need to know. And if you want your understanding of those teachings to get more refined, the present moment is a good place to look. Think about the Buddha on the night of his awakening. His first knowledge was recollection of past lives. Well, that was an awakening. But it did set in motion the question, is this pattern applied just to him or did it apply to everybody? And what's the factor that determines whether life is going to be happy or sad? Comfortable or uncomfortable. So in the second knowledge, he applied his powers of concentration to that question and discovered that the principle of rebirth applies to everybody. And it's actions performed under right views, right intentions performed with right views. The view that your actions are important, those are the things that led to happy lifetimes. But then the Buddha did something very unusual. He applied that insight into the present moment. What do all these teachings have to do about the present moment? And that's where the third knowledge came in. He focused in on the immediate present, the questions of stress and suffering right here and now, the causes for those things as they appear right here and now. And it was by focusing on his actions in the present moment, the stress and suffering that was right there in the present moment and the mental activities that led him beyond or transcending suffering. Those were all there right there in that moment, too. That's where he looked. It was by looking in the present moment in that way that he was able to break through to something else. Something can be touched right here in your awareness of the present moment. So learn to take the Dharma and use it in a way that keeps bringing you back, bringing you back to what you're doing right here, right now.
with the determination to do it skillfully, with alertness, with mindfulness. If you have any doubts about why you're here, re reflect on what the Dharma teaches, that it's a useful thing we're doing right here. A lot of people accuse meditators of simply running away. Well, not running away, we're running back to the source of all things right here. We're accused of doing something that's totally useless to other people. Well, no, it's not. We're getting rid of greed, anger, and delusion right here. There's a purpose for our being here. And it's an important purpose. It's the most important thing we can do with our lives. The sort of thing that if it demanded great sacrifices, we should be willing to make them. As the Buddha once said, even if your practice of the holy life brings tears bathing your cheeks in sorrow or frustration, whatever, he said, stick with it. Much better than giving up, because this is the best use of your life. The Dharma is there to remind you of that, so we're not just hanging out in the present moment or grooving or blissing out in the present moment, although there may be bliss. So that's not what we're here for. We're here for something more important than that. So the teachings on the past and the future, the teachings, all the teachings of the Dharma. Are here to remind us of that, to give us incentive, to stick with the present moment, to watch the present moment, to work with the present moment, to parse it out, to see which part of our experience is the result of past karma, which is the actual karma we're doing right now, which is the result of the karma. And our experimental laboratory for doing that is working with the breath. So here you are, right at the breath. You're where you should be. You're at the best place you can be right now, the most useful place you can be right now. So make the most of that opportunity. <laughs>